good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to uh, this very special, at least for us, uh, very special uh, round table on Bhavari Gudhanda. And uh, I'd like to welcome all of you to this hopefully a fruitful conference where we come up with some solutions rather than looking at problems. Let me just uh, request Prashant Kankoje to read out a message from the Prime Minister uh, immediately before I actually start the formal uh, proceedings. The Prime Minister uh, has sent us a message which I'd like to read to the audience. But we 
we have a broad idea of where the trend is or what the issues are. So some of the speakers are going to try and look at how we can galvanize those stranded assets which are lying shut for whatever reason. And it is ironical that on one hand you have these assets, built assets in the Dhamma, which are national assets, which are state assets for which the ultimately the consumer is paying in some form or the other. And on the other hand, you have power cuts and you have a situation uh, where people are not getting 24 by 7 electricity. So there is some mismatch somewhere which needs to be, I think, sorted out very quickly. The second broad uh, uh, theme that we are looking at uh, today is on the rural consumer. Uh, people like me who are Mumbaikers or uh, who have been traveling and live in cities most of the time, keep reading about the rural consumer. Fortunately for me, uh, I have the good fortune of being married to a Tendulkar who happens to live in a village. So I spend a lot of time in what is rural Maharashtra or rural uh, landscape. So I understand some of the issues of electricity, agriculture, the co-relationship of the two uh, from a first-hand point of view. And those issues are also something we are going to look at and try and come up with workable solutions, not just theoretical solutions. And the third, I think, element we need to look at besides the standard assets of that is, can we develop a special market, an independent market in Vidarbha, okay, which will then help the consumers of Vidarbha to get the price benefit of the fact that the assets are here, the coal is here, the power station is here, and the market is here. And of course, the government has also announced some new schemes uh, like cross subsidy exemptions, etc., which I don't know whether it's been passed or not passed. The same dimension that we're looking at it, we're working on it. And so we look at that as well whether a cross subsidy exemption of one, two, three, four years uh, for consumers in Vidarbha will boost industry and make industry here more competitive and uh, uh, more, uh, shall we say, vibrant and bringing more investment and development into this region. So, with those broad ideas, uh, let me invite the panelists to please come up on the stage. Dr. Deo, Mr. Boinka, uh, our uh, other panelists. Uh, sorry, the names are not visible. <laughs> if, you can, if you can see your name, please join us. Ashish, I think. That's you. The mic is fine. Please come. Please. Mr. Prasad. Now, uh, broadly, uh, the, the, the idea is to make it interactive, okay? Good point for a starting point for discussions. But uh, then the actually it was a very negative way of starting this. But whoever has prepared this slide on my behalf, I think has uh, taken a rather extreme view. But industry needs to be uh, put into a much better shape than it is. And the farmers, are having a issue. Unleashing the potential of standard assets as we go along. What are your concerns? And we want to understand those concerns. And I think one of the key uh, ideas of today's conference is that, that we want to understand uh, how these assets will be released uh, and the potential start. Uh, so releasing of standard capacity. I just want to make one general point. I was on the uh, advisory committee of the Ministry of Power last, uh, last year. And one of the subgroups that I was handling was uh, the, the issue of uh, transmission. But while we are having discussions, I want to make a point. You must realize that no matter what, who owns the power plant or who owns the transmission line, remember the promoter's contribution is 20 to 25% or 30% at the most. The balance money is coming from banks. These banks are public sector banks where your and my money is also created. So we as consumers, we as citizens are also stakeholders. And these are assets which say electricity is not going to be put into his pocket. It is going to be used by the consumer. It is a public service. So if it is a public service, let's get the fundamental straight. That if the asset is stranded, then 
the, the loser, the, the poor promoter in any case is in a suit. But what about the banks and what about the public money? They are also in a suit. And therefore, you cannot afford in a country like India to have assets which are stranded. We have to find a solution to unleash this potential. And I cannot overemphasize the importance of releasing stranded assets. Nowhere in the world you have a situation where bar plants are lying shut and there are bar cuts on the other side. This is ridiculous. Something is seriously wrong somewhere. Wherever it is, it has to be fixed. And it doesn't have to be fixed in the interest of A promoter or B promoter. It has to be fixed in the interest of the economy. It has to be fixed in the interest of the consumer. And the, uh, the, it's, a, it's a national base. We can't afford it. Now, the other thing is that if you look at Electricity Act 2003 and the proposed amendments, the Electricity Act 2003, by the way, has, in my mind, has failed to deliver. Because the only chap who's missing in the game, we have generators, we have transmission balas, we have distribution companies, everything is fine. The fellow who's really out of action is the consumer. Consumer doesn't have a choice. What choice do we have? So it's like putting a barrel and saying, you have to buy it for me, or you have to buy it for me. I mean, what is this? That's not choice. And if you want to buy from somebody else, I'll put a cross subsidy surcharge which is so high that you won't buy from somebody else. Or I'll reduce your contract demand. 20 megawatt connection you've got, very good. 10 megawatts you want to buy from outside, I'll reduce your contract demand to 10. And by the way, the moment you draw one extra unit, I'll charge you 50 rupees, 20 rupees. Now, what are you trying to do? Where is the competition? Where is the consumer choice? So you, unless you, uh, so the, the idea is that we need to create a consumer choice, not in the interest of doing some dark dharam for anybody, because we want a vibrant economy. Because if there is a consumer choice, there will be a market. Market discovery will lead to sh schedule and dispatch of power. I want to just point out here, I've been in this business for 23 years in the, as far as IPPI is concerned, and I've been in the past sector only for 37 years. What I want to tell you is this, that there is a confusion in the minds of people, rightly or wrongly. The fellows who own the power plants or who own the distribution companies are looking at the sector only from their point of view. And the consumer is the last priority. Consumer is the a regulatory commission That's not the point. If the consumer is not going to pay you, or he doesn't have the ability to pay you, no matter what tariff increase you are talking about, that tariff increase is not going to work because the paying capacity of the consumer has to be there. So if you are a smart businessman, the first thing you need to do is to figure out that what is the capacity of the consumer to pay. Then I will set up a plan. Not that I will set up a plan and Jabardesti say, hey, you pay me, you pay me, you pay me, or I go into standard assets, or I export the power out of Vidarbha, or I'll do something else. It is stupid. I'm sorry for using such language. You're not a smart businessman. But the question is, all that will come into play if you allow competition to happen, if you allow market to take place. When I go in right now, you step out of there and you go and buy Sabji. Yeah, there are 10 different shops. You have a choice. Which shop you go to, you negotiate, you haggle, and you, you enjoy your haggling, and you, you go and pick up a good deal. But if he said, no, no, you only have to buy from one shop and you have to exactly pay the price and retail you because it's regulated, then where is the competition? So there is no competition and this is a serious issue. So can we create, taking advantage of the fact that converting the disadvantage of the mind to an advantage, can we create a market where consumers in Vidharva, industry in Vidharva can get more competitive, can benefit from some ways of making sure that our tariffs are competitive, which brings in more competition, which brings in more investment, which brings in more development, which brings in more consumers and more industry. The third idea that we have is already the government of Maharashtra and Port has announced or is in the process of announcing a scheme for solar uh, distributed generation. Now, this is something which is very near our heart. And uh, the only thing I have to say is, whatever scheme that I have read, there seems to be a rubber stamp scheme of a solar project. Approved cost 
and there's so much that the developer has to bring in, so much the government has to bring in. I am not very sure whether this scheme will work everywhere. Why? Because the water table may be 20 feet in one place, maybe 150 feet in one place, and maybe 400 feet in one place. So whether that same solar panel in the same factory can pull uh, enough water out from 300 feet, whereas it is designed for 50 feet, at the same price is something which I am not clear about. I am not saying it can't be done, but I am not clear about it. And therefore I am worried about that scheme. But what we are proposing is to at least make sure that under a distributed generation scheme, with the support of uh, Vidarbha Industries Association and with the people of uh, Vidarbha, who at least adopt 100, 200, 300 villages, where we can basically give them electricity for the basic needs of their day-to-day -day living, improve their standard. Now, if you ask a bureaucrat uh, that we want to have a distributed generation scheme with them, no, no, not necessary. All villages are connected. But how many hours of power are they getting? That question is not answered. And should not and will not be answered. Four hours, five hours, six hours, three hours, two hours, depending. So we are talking about augmenting that. We are talking about increasing that by giving battery banks, storage capacity, solar panels, augmenting what is already being provided by the state. So that is the, 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 the other idea that I thought I would bring to the table. And I think financial restructuring is connected to standard capacity, so I won't get there. Okay, I'm not sure on the latest numbers because Tata's tell me they've taken over one project and the other one has taken over the other project and it's in the pipeline, but it is not being. So 2,500 megawatts of standard capacity in the region largely due to absence of long-term PPs and fuel availability. I don't understand this. How can anyone set up a power plant without a PPA? If there is a power plant set up, why can't a PPA be signed? Where is the PPA? You are willing to buy RGGPL power or NTPC power at 7 and 8 and 9 rupees and whatever. Why can't you buy this power? It's in the state. It's a state asset. It should be absolutely given priority. And I'm sure the government will do that. So, uh, the, what we have suggested to the Honorable Chief Minister, which has not gone down very well yet, is a crazy idea, but it's an important idea. What we have said is identify the standard capacity, and I want the banker's reaction on this. The cross subsidy surcharge on industry, more or less, is in the range of between 50 paisa to 160, depending on what voltage you connected in Maharashtra, uh, in that range. Uh, what we have suggested is the, for a stranded asset for three years, there will be a cross subsidy exemption for any consumer that buys power from a Vidarbha generator. Okay. Now we have to also make things easy for banks. Uh, the banker is already stressed and uh, we have to come up with some policy where the standard capacity is can be released and the banker sees some light at the end of the tunnel. So there is a price advantage. Obviously people are going to say why Vidarbha why not in Marakwada? Why not in other places? Obviously, they will say that. And then and that, that is something the government has to take for. Uh, or are we just going to be scared of saying that you know, somebody is going to take it out in a public interest litigation? So, therefore, this is that. Or frame a proper policy and frame proper reasons and say that there is a standard capacity here. And then, if necessary, extend that standard capacity advantage, if necessary, to other parts of Maharashtra, where if there is any standard. Uh, other than, of course, RGGPL is thanks to fuel, uh, this, is, this can be extended. So what you're really doing is instead of importing power from outside Maharashtra, you're generating power within Maharashtra, you're generating jobs within Maharashtra, you're generating industry within Maharashtra, you're generating a market within Maharashtra. Why should you import power from all over the countryside? Okay. So that's what we suggested. Starting point should be that one. All generating stations in Vidarbha, which are stranded, identified very clearly through a public hearing process, transparent process, will get uh, this kind of an exemption. And that's a proposal uh, which we are suggesting. Uh, as I mentioned, if there's competition, there will be lower tax. Uh, everybody wants, I don't know if you all read the newspapers, everyone's got solar. They say everyone is going crazy, but everyone's got solar crazy now. 
So everyone is going in. You will be touched by the sun. So everyone is not solar. So if solar capacity is the latest. So I am not very clear on how much capacity, or, or how much land, or, and acquisition of land, and, and, and uh, all of those issues. I'm sure something will good will come out of it. But um, look at what's happening. There's competition. Prices of solar power are coming down. Capital cost of solar power is coming down. Uh, and there's a new technology, which I don't mind sharing in UK, uh, using a, a mineral called Berkowitz, which then makes the uh, availability efficiency almost 45%. So thanks to come, if you're going to get 45% from solar, which means zero variable cost, it's not that bad here. I mentioned solar energy-based uh, generation. I don't want to spend too much time. But basically, it's nothing but a glorified inverter. Um, there's a battery bank which stores energy and augments the supply uh, that the uh, state is already providing. Financial restructuring. Now, you know, the thing about banks is um, banks will always lend you money if you don't want it. If you notice, if you have a little money lying in some deposit somewhere, all the bank fellows will have a the fixed deposit and tell them, I have, a, I have a scheme, I have this. But when you need the money, you go to them, the bankers will say, you know, sorry, you're going. This doesn't fit into this, that, and there. So that's the banker's psychology. And it's not his fault. He's also looking at risk and reward. But also remember, the bank has to re recover his money, and at the same time, he has to lend money to earn money. So because he's, he's already got a fixed deposit from which he's paying interest. So longer moratorium period for bank finance. Maybe once these projects take off, maybe a restructuring can be done. We'd love to hear from uh, our friend from the banking industry what he has to say. Longer duration of loan tenure in the life of the project. Maybe the PPA needs to be extended. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but about uh, 15 years ago, or was 18 years ago, uh, Reliance released a 100-year bond. A uh, 100-year bond at 1%, 2%, I forget. Uh, whatever it was, the issue was that they actually had, and it got oversubscribed to the international bond. So if you are going to use uh, short-term money, which is five-year, ten-year money, to finance 30-year, 40-year contracts, then you are going to have issues. The bank will have issues, you will have issues. So you have to find a long-term solution. Uh, lower interest rate for critical projects, such as the extended property sector. Uh, you know, all of these things, of course, can be negotiated with the banker. If he sees the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, if he sees that his money is coming back, if he sees the project looks viable, the promoter is looking serious, he's bringing in some capital, uh, then uh, perhaps it's added to the chain. Look at Kingfisher and look at SpiceJet. Uh, in Kingfisher, money wasn't coming in, so the bank has to open it. Whereas in SpiceJet, even though it's losing money, money is coming in, so they are supporting uh, SpiceJet. So it's, it's a simple logic. So let the deliberations begin, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me invite uh, Suhas, if you don't mind going front, up front, and then we can have uh, Mr. Goinka, uh, because our friend has to catch a flight, and then we'll have uh, uh, our banker friend, and then uh, Dr. Dev, if you can take the liberty of requesting you to speak last, since you have, for most 30, 35 years, experience in the past sector. So, so that's over to you.